I'm going to give myself 10 hours to research ChatGPT to see if it can actually revolutionize writing. I'm not starting from scratch, I have had some ideas and practice before about writing and storytelling, so I'm putting the notes together to give me some themes. Ironically, I'm using Elicit, which is an AI research tool, and ChatGPT Playground, the more popular AI tool, to brainstorm some questions that I want to explore and go deeper on. Just over an hour in, I've got some themes with these questions, and I think the most logical step to take is to see how AI answers them. AI might be fast with its answers, but without adding specific, prompt information, it is so vague. It repeats itself, contradicts itself, and sometimes doesn't answer the question, but talks about something sort of related. This question asked if AI has value in creative collaboration, to which it said AI can take on more complex tasks, but then said AI struggles with more complex tasks. This question was about the use of AI in writing, and it gives styles rather than actions taken by the person, and then gave examples that don't exist or were not relevant to the original question. Bearing in mind I'm using just one AI tool and I haven't done any prompt construction for these answers, they're not bad, but I want to see what the humans say, so let's have a look at YouTube. Nothing too scientific about this, I just search ChatGPT and writing, then watch the top 100 videos that appeared in YouTube. As I'm sure you can imagine, a lot of the YouTube videos either repeated themselves or didn't really make any useful points or valuable points, so I now want to have a look at what the academic experts are saying. Bearing in mind this level of AI is fairly new, I'm looking for broader discussions around writing with tech and looking for more depth on the topics the AI and YouTube videos covered. So what I'm doing is copying the question from my Obsidian, then putting it into Elicit, that's giving me a summary, and then I'm using that to find papers that are interesting and papers that have been written by experts and peer-reviewed. But I don't actually go deep on those papers until I know I have access to the full paper, so I open it up, I clip it to Zotero, and then if Zotero can find the PDF, then I will read the paper. As I clip all interesting articles for the questions, there are duplicates which Zotero automatically finds so I can merge them together. Using emoji tags on the items helps me visually scan what I have consumed and you can see all the videos I clipped into this project with a link to those notes inside of Obsidian. Using these small little things in Zotero allows me to just speed through all of the articles or the videos or the blogs all in the same app. I don't have to worry about where I store them. It's all in one place and it all links to where my notes are as well, which makes going backwards and forwards really convenient. But with only six hours left, I should probably stop talking about Zotero and start reading. While highlighting and reading these articles, lots of related ideas and topics were being brought up with other references and I added them to the Zotero project collection. But as you can imagine, with the 10 hour time limit, I don't think I'll be able to get through them all. And as much as I would love to keep reading, I need to stop researching at some point and the 10 hour limit is what I've given myself. So let's start putting things together. Having the same file open twice with individual outlines to jump up and down makes navigating all the notes pretty quick. Then when clicking on the source link, the imported highlight file from Zotero shows me all the points I thought were important, which I can click on to go back to the paper if I want some more context. With just over three and a half hours to go, I'm going to start writing this out, but I have a, uh, an opinion, so I'm going to try and be as unbiased as I can, but I certainly have a perspective uh, and an argument to make. As you can see, I'm using a canvas to map out all of my research to help me grasp the connections and shape my argument a bit better. I started with the questions, the yellow cards, and explored the answers linking to other cards, the grey ones. As I went through the answers, interest and priority became obvious, so I added colours to help highlight links, topics and arguments to emphasise. The colour code at the bottom is so I don't forget where my head was at if I change the colour's meaning in the future. With just over three hours to go, it's time to start distilling all of these points into an article that you can either read or listen to. But I want to come clean on something first. This is 10 hours throughout a week, not all in one day. So I have had time to think and research other things to come back with a clearer mind. You know, time absolutely flies when you enjoy what you're doing, but I figured something out that I want to show you. I have both my screens split here, hence the squash. This is the same file open in two places. On the left are my notes towards the bottom of the file, and the right my essay at the top with the conclusion being my visual divider. 
Previously, I would go down my notes and write up some thoughts about each point and put that into the essay going back and forth. But with the time crunch, it just doesn't make sense to do that as I already have an outline. So I'm now grouping points under the new outline. Yes, saying that out loud sounds pretty obvious and sounds pretty silly, like why didn't I do that in the first place, but these are the sorts of things that you learn during the writing process, because it's not step one, two, three, it's sort of one, two, then back to one, then like 2.3, it, it's all over the place. And because none of my previous writing projects has had a time crunch, I've never needed to change my process, but this one does, hence the change. During my first write-up, the idea is to order the points in a way that makes sense often reordering sections with the outline, moving points to different sections, and linking arguments with sentences, making sure to keep the flow of the text going. <laughs> 57 minutes to go. I've, I've written it. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense, though, so I'm going to spend far more than 57 minutes editing this. I know that much. So I'm going to make a little deal with myself and say 10 hours was researching and I've technically researched, I've technically finished because I have all of my thoughts together, but uh, it, it doesn't really make sense when you read it. And because I'm fully engrossed in this topic, I want to finish the article, so I'm going to finish it and just tell you uh, how long it took me. I keep reminding myself of the original question. Can ChatGPT revolutionise writing? To keep myself grounded and not fly off in all other directions. <laughs> yeah, so a cut for you, five hours for me. I'm almost finished writing it. I've got the last couple of sections to go. I've got my concluding thoughts and the, the last section of the essay. But lots of other ideas came up, thoughts and different perspectives that I've put on the side and sort of said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll go over there at another point, but not right now. I did get a little bit carried away during the writing process, so I didn't record any time lapses or literally anything, so if you want to know more about my writing process, let me know in the comment section below and I can include that in a future video, but this is where I ended on. Firstly, ChatGPT was too narrow, I needed to expand AI writing into other tools like Bing AI and all the others out there. But then I realised AI writing doesn't really exist, it's AI text generation. An important distinction. Just listen to this. Your teachers read your stuff because they were paid to read it to find out about you. He has a point, but so what? There is no such rule that you should not start a sentence with because or you shouldn't start a sentence with and. There is no such rule that you shouldn't split infinitives. There is no such rule that you shouldn't use passive verbs. Go down the line almost no matter what you've been told about writing is wrong as if they say a rule. The big exception is spelling. And that's another good point, but how do I go from a lecture talking about academic writing and beyond to AI text generation? Well, writing is thinking. We gain understanding, we, we link things together, we have aha moments. But AI doesn't think like we do, it doesn't understand like we do. Importantly, for writers that care about the truth, whatever your epistemological definition of truth is, AI doesn't have a truth. It makes mistakes, and a lot of them. Words like original, unique, creative are often used to describe good writing. But if I tell you what is on my desk while I type this, is that good writing? It is original, no one else knows it. It is unique, it hasn't been seen before. It is creative, I'm connecting ideas together. But it isn't valuable. Yes, I know value is a loaded word, but as Marquez said... Basically, the answers that it gives are really convincing to someone who doesn't know anything already about that subject. But if you are already an expert in the subject that you ask it about, then you'll find that the answers are like C+, maybe B+, sometimes, at best. So AI can have value for beginners and people beginning their exploration in a topic, but if you have knowledge or understanding or even a base level of expertise, it becomes a game of spot the AI mistake or spot what was wrong. Even reflecting on and looking back at how I wrote this article, there were loads of mistakes and errors that came up when I tried to check what I was saying with AI. And to be honest, I'd much rather watch YouTube that gave me the same information than go through prompt generation talking to an AI because YouTube's much more fun uh, and just easier to consume. 
I even tried to get AI to link the connections that I'd already made. So during the writing process, I linked some of Seth Godin's older work with AI writing and some other work in learning theories such as cognitive psychology and elements of that. But I literally had to spell it out to AI what I wanted it to tell me. It, it couldn't figure it out itself. Now, I know there's been a, a lot of worry about the ethical considerations and potential problems AI text generation could create, but the way I see it is AI text generation doesn't create the problems. It emphasizes the problems that we already have. A bad worksman blames his tools, and in this situation, I think it's our misinformation management system that's the problem. As a whole, writing is far too complex for AI to revolutionize, but there are parts of the writing process that AI can revolutionize, like brainstorming at the start or for beginners in any topic. So writers are not going anywhere, but they do have another tool at their disposal.